be grieved, so forth. Why? Because he's got a personality. Now, what this is saying, though, is saying that there is a promise under the new covenant for the Holy Spirit to be given to all those who are believers. And this Holy Spirit coming first in the form of the indwelling Holy Spirit. In other words, he comes and comes inside of us as we become born again. He is the one that orchestrates the power for that new birth experience. The Holy Spirit and the Word work together, just like a man and a woman work together. The Holy Spirit and the Word work together to bring about new birth. But that is called the within experience. There's another experience that is on top of that, and that's called the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Luke chapter 24, please. Luke chapter 24, and I'm going to jump off into some things now, but I want to make sure that you get a, an understanding of, of what we're saying here uh, from a very simple standpoint. Luke chapter 24. Now I'm saying that because there are some people that think that when they get the Holy Spirit inside, meaning indwelling, and they get born again, they think that that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it is not. It's two separate works of grace. And so what we have to do is we have to separate them so that your mind and your heart can be convinced so that you can receive, if you have not received, that second work of grace. Let's look at Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with what? Power from on high. Now notice what he says here. I said the promise of my Father upon you. Now notice the word upon. Uh, this is not within. This is upon. This happens to allude to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now this Holy Spirit in, uh, uh, upon has to do with the endowment of power from on high so that you and I can be a witness for Him, for God. Jesus calls the outpouring the promise of my Father. Peter refers to it as the promise of the Holy Ghost. Peter also refers to it as the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now we have two things happening. We have an indwelling and we have an infilling. So now as a person gets born again, they can receive the infilling. But if they're not born again, they cannot receive the infilling. The only thing that they can receive is Jesus Christ. They can get born again. Now, notice what he said. He said tarry. Now, underline the word tarry because there are some people that have taught certain doctrines concerning tarry. And the word tarry literally means to wait. It means to wait. So what is he saying here? He is saying, I want you to wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now let's go over, if you will, to Acts. And Acts chapter, glory to God. Acts chapter, Lord have mercy. I just, I just, wait a minute. I think I lost myself. I, don't, I, I didn't lose myself. I want to make it so you get it. Acts chapter 1 again. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. And let me read that again. Verse 5. I'll start there. Nope, nope, nope. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which uh, saith he, he, he have heard of me. Now, this waiting... They were waiting for the promise of the Father, which you said you've heard of me. And they were waiting in Jerusalem. That Jerusalem waiting was that they were waiting for, I mean, they didn't know how this was coming. They had no idea what was going to really happen. Other than the fact that he said, you'll be endued with power uh, up here in verse 8. But they were waiting on the day of Pentecost. 
because as they came there, all the people were coming to Pentecost for the high time of Pentecost that happens in Jerusalem. So here they were, and they were waiting. But what has happened is they were waiting for the ministry of the Holy Spirit to begin in this earth. They were not waiting to be born again. They were born again in John chapter 20. Turn to John chapter 20, and I'll show you that. Let me know when you get there. Jesus had, had, had been raised from the dead, and Jesus could no longer do miracles. However, because he was in a different part of his ministry now, and verse 21, verse 20, and when he had so said, he showed them of his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, What? Receive the Holy Ghost. Is that a indwelling or is that a uh, infilling? That is indwelling. Now he's coming on the inside of them to change them. And whosoever sent you remit, they remit it to them. And then whosoever sent you retain, they are retained. However, if you come over to Acts chapter 1, he's talking about now the upon experience. He's saying now, verse 8, but you shall receive what? Power, because you're going to have to witness for me. You're going to receive the anointing of God, the power of God, that's going to come on human flesh to do what only God can do. And that power does not come on an unsaved person. It must come on a saved person. An unsaved person cannot receive the Holy Ghost. The best thing they can do is receive Jesus from me. All right? Now, and, and we've got proof of that. And proof of that, I better show you that because I, I don't want to stop. Turn to Luke chapter 11, please. Luke chapter 11, praise God in heaven. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 11. I'm going to get deep. I know you're all wondering where you're going to get deep. You need to learn this. Look at Luke chapter 11, and let's look at verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Now, who is talking here? Jesus. How do you know it's Jesus talking? It's in the red. See, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, what? Receiveth. And he that seeketh, what? Findeth. And to him that knocketh, what? It shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that's a father, 